It's minus 7.5 degrees Celsius. It's snowing a bit. Perfect conditions to take macro snowflake photos. Winter is an amazing season to take photos. You can take nice landscape shots with the sunrise or sunset and the snow and trees. So more the whole ambience, more wide angle. But you can also concentrate on the small and tiny things around you like snowflakes. Have you ever tried to photograph snowflakes? I show you how that works. What you need, of course, are snowflakes. It should be very, very yeah, cold. Uh, usually it's cold when there are snowflakes, but sometimes you try to photograph only the snow like this, but those are not snowflakes. This is just ice, so you need fresh snowflakes. What you need as well, or what I would recommend you, is some clothing. Uh, the best would be some dark fleece or some dark other texture, which has a bit of structure where the snowflakes can lay on. My hat would be good as well. I tried it as well with a car. I have a black car and I tried to make it on the surface of the car, but that did not work that good. The best it worked with the fleece here. This is uh, a quick commercial my uh, Haukeland fleece, photographer's clothing that will come out in March, the jacket here as well. Um, this is perfect for snowflake photos, but of course you can take all other clothing as well. It should be dark that you can see the bright and white snowflakes on the dark background. What you now need to do at first is clean your fabric, so just blow with your breath on your clothing and what it does, it gets rid of all the snowflakes you don't want. What you want are some nice and single snowflakes, not a whole bunch of snowflakes. Only one good looking fresh snowflake. The better it looks with the eye, the better it is to photograph. And yeah, sometimes you have to clean all over like every 10 minutes or five minutes, depending on how much it's snowing, uh, your fabric, and then it's perfect to photograph. What we then have, I have my camera and I have a macro lens. I'm using the Sony a7R2, but you can use whatever camera you are using. I'm using a full frame camera. You can use an APS-C camera, micro for third, does not really matter. What you need is a macro lens. And what macro means, you can get very close to things. So tiny things appear big on the sensor of your camera. This is a Tokita lens. It's a very old lens. I have made it for five or six years. Um, it's a 100 millimeter 2.8 lens. It's made for Canon, but I use it with an adapter. It's the Sigma MC11 on the Sony and between my macro lens I have some macro rings. Those are old as well. They're made for Canon as well. So I have them in between my lens, my adapter and my camera. And what it now does, I have 100 millimeter macro. So with that I can go very close. But when I want to go even closer, I take macro rings which you can get on Amazon. I put the link in the description and they give me more focal length and they make it possible that I can get the tiny snowflake, which is something around one or two millimeter only, very, very big on the sensor. What about the settings? Tell me the settings, dude. Well, the settings are quite strange and they are totally depending on your situation. Usually when it's snowing, it's a bit darker because the sky is cloudy. So you need to adjust your settings to your surrounding. What I would suggest you is to not go in a too dark area and it might be even darker if you go down on the ground. So I'm somewhere, yeah, top level here of some snow on the side and here is enough light to photograph the whole scenery. If you have a torch, if you have a flash for your macro lens or something, use it, it's totally fine. If you have a tripod, you can try it as well. I more like it to do it handheld. It's a bit more difficult, but I don't like to get everything very detailed with the tripod and I don't have a tripod with me actually as well. <laughs> so I have to do it handheld. So let's go over to the settings I am using. I'm here right now at f 6.3 sometimes 5.6 sometimes 7.1 um, yeah it's totally depending when you close the aperture with a macro lens it still will be a blurry background what i would photograph on 2.8 which is possible with this lens 
I would only have maybe one part, one of the little stars of the snowflake in focus and the rest would be out of focus. So when you close the aperture, let's say on 8 or 9 or 11, it still will be not everything in focus of the snowflake depending on your angle with your camera. So yeah, aperture, let's say 6.3. Shutter speed is on a two hundredths of a second and ISO I go on 5000. Why 5000? Well, a day it's not that tough to photograph with a high ISO, but it gives you more stability with a fast shutter speed. You won't get that blurry images when you have a fast shutter speed and as well you can close your aperture more. When you don't want to go that high with the ISO, you need more light, like with a torch, with a flash or something. I don't have, so I have to take the high ISO, but you won't even recognize it in the image. The sensor of the a7R2 is pretty good and as well with the APS-C camera you won't see that much of noise and even if you see noise, who cares about noise? It's better to have noise than to have a blurry image, isn't it? I now lean with my elbow at the snow and what I do now, I don't focus in automatic mode. I just go on manual focus and then I go to the closest point that is possible and this is here on 0.3 and now with the macro rings and everything in between I have a very close image. I can see on the fleece every single fiber of the Please, that's crazy. It looks like hair. And now you can see the small snowflakes. They are giant in the image. I do some filming now. And what I do now, only with my distance, I control the focus. So when I go closer, you see the snowflake is in focus. When I go further away, the snowflake is not in focus. So it's only millimeter work. You see, and it's a huge of difference if you move for one millimeter. So try to stop breathing. Yeah, I mean, it's serious. You have to stop breathing, but just for a second. You have to hold your breath and then you are more stable. Do it like this. And then breathe out. And then hold your breath. Chuck, 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 chuck. Photo, photo, photo. And then you can breathe again. And that will give you more stability. This was how to photograph snowflakes with a macro lens. It's a lot of fun, but watch out for your fingers. They get very, very, very cold as well, your feet. If you have taken some images, post them on Instagram with at Jaworski or hashtag Jaworski. And if you have other tips for other photographers, and of course for me as well, write them in the comments below. And amongst all comments, I will give away one of my courses. Again, quick commercial at learnfromben.com. You get download courses to learn photography, learn image editing, learn filmmaking, and learn cutting our videos as well and today I will give away my landscape photography course because we filmed it in Norway it's about the essentials of landscape photographers made for beginners that want to start with landscape photography yeah and it's snow everywhere in Norway so you can win that course today or you can buy it at learnfromben.com and improve your landscape photography skills Good luck, I see you in the next video. Hit thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, ring the bell, and I see you next time. I take some more macro shots.